The Las Vegas Raiders have officially started joint practices with the Los Angeles Rams today. Uh, today was the very first scrimmage. And as you guys know, the Raiders have looked very, very good this offseason so far. They whooped on the 49ers, and now apparently they're doing the same thing to the Los Angeles Rams. We're going to get into it. There's a lot of videos that I kind of want to talk about. There's some clips. Uh, and then there's some updates as well. Let's get right into it. Uh, the first clip we're going to look at here is this kid with the number nine jersey on for the Raiders. The guy that the Raiders took with the seventh overall pick. A guy, when you just look at those, oh, look at the arm length. I mean, look at how long this guy is, right? Look at him explode into the bag here. Pick it up. I mean, Tyree Wilson is a massive human. And you can see, like, relative to, you know, the, the guy filming here, relative to number 62 here, he's just bigger than a lot of people. And, yeah, being big doesn't always translate to success. But if Tyree Wilson can just develop the hand-to-hand -hand pass rush technique that we think he should be able to, the guy's going to be a very, very good football player. I'm very excited to watch this guy progress. Very excited to watch some of his um, his his film. Um, another guy that's absolutely fantastic is Max Crosby, and we have a, a an interesting update. First fight of camp for the Las Vegas Raiders. Max Crosby was in the middle of it. We'll talk about that in just a second. But who throws the the shed here, right? The way Max does here. Who who does that? <laughs> right? You see him absolutely toss this to the side. I love the energy that Max Crosby brings. It's, it's something unique. It's something special. And this guy is a true Raider. And I'm very glad that the Las Vegas Raiders were able to steal him out of this, out of that draft class, right? Because if we didn't get Max out of that class, man, that class would be severely disappointing. And the fact that we found Max Crosby really, really excites me. And he's young still. He's going to get better. So I think this is the year that Max Crosby really takes that, that next step in, in multiple ways, right? Uh, not only is Max Crosby going to take that step in his leadership, I think he's going to get even better with his ability to get to the quarterback. But uh, we got the first fight. Apparently, running back Cam Akers lowered his helmet towards Max Crosby. Apparently, Max Crosby was trying to punch the ball out. And as Max was trying to punch that ball out, Cam Akers didn't like it. And Cam Akers threw a swing towards Max Crosby. And apparently, Max Crosby swung right back and they went at it. And the teams got involved. And both guys got kicked out of practice. Uh, Cam Akers went to the locker room and Max Crosby was held off to the side. Um, I think, I do think from the coach's perspective is, is big that guys don't fight because they want to be able to do things and work with one another and be able to kind of, uh, you know, they want to be able to kind of do certain concepts and get better as two football teams. But for Max Crosby and for the Raiders, you know, I think you got to fight a little bit. I think it brings people together. You know, when one guy gets into a fight, you'll be able to visually see which guys are going to back those players up. And for Max Crosby to get into the fight, and let's say, you know, 16 guys go over there to back up Crosby, it makes that unit a little bit closer, right? Because now you got guys that have your back, right? So, although I know they say not to fight, I think you got to fight a little bit because you're going into battle every single week. You got to know that the next guy has your back. Uh, another interesting update, Max Crosby as well. Uh, you're going to see him absolutely crush number 79, the right tackle. Uh, this is this is almost unfair if you guys ask me. Uh, you're going to see that Max Crosby is going to explode out of his stance. He's going to jump to the inside. He's going to swat with the right hand. He's going to bring the left hand over the top. And he's going to win. He's going to get inside leverage on this tackle. And this is just a quick one-two move by Crosby. And you see him absolutely crush number 79. Gets to the quarterback for a would-be sack. Obviously, it is a one-on-one -on -one drill, which does technically favor the offense. Uh, I'm sorry, the defensive linemen. Uh, defensive linemen have a much bigger advantage, right? Especially kind of jumping to the inside, because generally speaking, there are guards in the NFL that'll be right there to kind of help there. Um, but one of the interesting reps that we're getting is that apparently um, Butler, Rochelle, and Plant all bulldozing and dominating their reps right for Crosby as well. So uh, another update I heard from from someone else is that apparently the Las Vegas Raiders defensive line is dominating the Los Angeles Rams offensive line, right? The Raiders are crushing it once again. And, you know, at some point, you got to realize, like, hey, these are, you know, possibly false updates. Probably doesn't mean a whole lot. And then at other moments, you may say, there's something there. 
And I think the fact that the Raiders defensive line is bringing that energy, they're getting after it, they're whooping on the Rams offensive line, which I don't think is that good of a unit. But the fact that the Raiders are still doing it to an NFL offensive line kind of fires me up. Uh, Isaac Rochelle, Adam Plant, um, Adam Butler, right? And I don't know if it's Adam Butler or Matthew Butler, but one of the Butlers is getting after it, right? And that's the type of stuff that I like to watch. Um, you can see here Adam Butler, so it, it may have been Adam Butler. But you can see him whooping the, I believe it would be the right guard. I'm sorry, it's the center in this instance. Center's going to snap the football. Look at Butler. Bam, right punch. Rip with the left move. Break the contact. I mean, that right there is a beautiful move. And the thing with Adam Butler is we actually saw Butler translate this stuff in that first game, right? He got a little bit of pressure. Him and Kuntz ran a game on one play. On another play, he beat the guy in front of him, was able to get some pressure off the quarterback. This stuff translates, right? And you can see right now that uh, Adam Butler wins. And here's another thing. You know, I said that the defensive linemen in this instance have the upper hand. They do, actually. But, you know, if Trent Williams is in a one-on-one -on -one battle with Adam Butler, Trent Williams is going to whoop his ass, right? And that's because Trent Williams is one of the best tackles in the NFL. My point is, is if this guy was a top three or four guard, if this was Jason Kelsey, if this was Creed Humphrey, if this was one of those type of centers, He's going to win this rep against Adam Butler, but because Butler whooped this guy, you can tell that Butler's obviously better than the center, right? So it's a good sign to kind of be able to see. Um, here's another video. You can see Devontae Adams lined up against one of the cornerbacks here. Absolutely smokes him, which, you know, doesn't surprise me. You know, uh, first, first things first, cornerback's the hardest position in the NFL. Second, it's very, very hard if you're a, uh, corner in a one-on-one -on -one drill specifically it's it's even harder than being in an nfl game right because in this instance there's no linebackers you know when a guy has one yard of separation it's super simple but i show you guys this play because apparently Devonte adams was doing this against everyone uh, logan reaver said Devonte adams winning every matchup thrown at him two straight touchdowns in man coverage he's also drawn two pass interferences on deep balls to me, that's massive, right? Devontae Adams, and keep in mind, uh, Devontae Adams didn't, uh, he, he came out of practice last week at some point. He was, you know, he, he got, he got hit, came off the practice. I think it was the second scrimmage. He wasn't going to play in the preseason game, but regardless, Devontae Adams is healthy. And that's a massive positive sign for the Raiders. We need Devontae Adams healthy come week one. So I'm glad he's good to go. Josh McDaniels actually gave us this information in his presser. Or he told us that we will see Devontae Adams out there today. He's good to go. People were asking, oh, so he's fine. He, you know, he reiterated, Devontae Adams is good to go. So I'm glad Devontae Adams is out there. He's obviously doing what he does to pretty much everybody, right? He's doing it in camp. Uh, so it's a good sign to kind of see that. Um, more so than that, we got some actual updates from some of the reporters. Logan said, uh, Jimmy G bounced back from an incomplete deep pass to Devontae Adams with a 60-yard touchdown to Philip Dorsett on a wide-open post. Looked like a great play design. That's fantastic to me. When I look at what someone's tweeting, I look I look for the different parts. You know, you got to look at the, the, the detailed portions of this. So Philip Dorsett hit a post route, and it looked like it was a great play design. So I'm interested in seeing what the design was. Was it, you know, was it a post on one side and a deep dig on the other, and maybe the post safety jumped up to the dig and Dorsett just got behind it right because to me this is kind of what Josh McDaniels does from a play design I know last year we had Derek Carr and we didn't have success and people were you know this entire offseason everyone hated Josh McDaniels and you know I didn't personally agree with it because I felt like he he does a good job designing plays and I think now that it's you know we're here with the season Jimmy G is doing well Aiden McConnell looks good uh, and Derek Carr is doing his thing with the Saints, right? Shout out to him. He had a great preseason opener. But now I think we're at the point where we can start focusing on this Raiders team. We can start getting past the Derek Carr era and look forward. And I think we're now seeing things where Josh McDaniels is designing great plays. Where Aiden O'Connell is stepping up and throwing a really nice pass on a crosser to Cole Fotheringham or whatever it is. And we're seeing the even the updates from camp actually hit you know, we're, we're seeing it actually happen in real time. We're seeing it, right? We're seeing that Jimmy G is hitting Philip Dorsett for a 60-yard touchdown. Now, I want to state this. It wasn't a 60-yard throw, right? It was a 60-yard touchdown because it happened from the 40-yard line, 
right? I don't know exactly how long or how deep the pass is. Some people said it was a 70 yard pass, so maybe it was 70, but you know, it wasn't a full 70 yard touchdown pass. It may have been like a 40, 45 yard throw, right? I don't know. I'm just saying, right? So we don't really have that aspect of it, but I am glad that Josh McDaniels is running these different concepts and it's working because these are things that have proven to work, right? These concepts, and I know a lot of people talked about it last year about how Josh McDaniels isn't giving his quarterback enough leeway to change plays and audibles and those type of things. And sometimes you don't want to give your quarterback that option, right? Because, you know, who's more intelligent, an offensive coach or a quarterback, right? In terms of play designs, if a guy spends his time designing plays, is he going to be a better play designer than a quarterback who may change the play at the line of scrimmage, right? You may have a play called, for example, a post with the dig and that right there there's no way to stop if it's a cover two the post gets open if it's a cover three the dig gets open right behind the linebackers to me a a, a person who designs plays designs plays for a reason right that's why they're they're out there and and we know josh mccarrens has success so i hope the raiders can continue to have success i know these are just training camp updates i know it's not a whole lot and we'll see we haven't even seen jimmy g we're excited over aiden o'connell we haven't seen garoppolo but the reports are good right now, so we'll see what ends up happening. Uh, Sam Webb got an interception off of rookie quarterback Stetson Bennett. It was the first takeaway for the Raiders. Uh, remember, against the uh, 49ers, we got a lot of interceptions. There was a day in camp where we had like eight interceptions. Right? Or maybe it may have been seven. The Raiders have been intercepting passes. And uh, Sam Webb also had a interception in the actual game off of a deflection. If you guys remember, one of the guys dropped it and Sam Webb caught it and he picked it off. Uh, tip trail, right, as we call it. Um, I'm happy that Sam Webb's able to catch these, right, because receivers drop passes. At least once or twice a game, you'll have a receiver, like, drop a pass, the ball pops into the air. And it's up to the cornerbacks to have that high, that high that hand-eye coordination, the ability to recognize the ball popped up and intercept it because some guys will get confused and they don't know what's happening. Sam Webb catches those passes. So big shout out to Sam Webb for the first interception of camp. And apparently Byron Young's been looking good so far in 11 on 11. Uh, Jordan here said that can't hit anybody, but Byron Young got a couple of good pressures so far in 11 on 11 drills. That's massive because what I saw from Byron Young week one was not promising but apparently he's getting after it in 11 on 11s. And keep in mind, Byron Young is taking first team reps. Now, I think he's going to start, but he's rotating in, right? Him and Neil Farrell are rotating in uh, with Jerry Tillery and Below Nichols. Those four guys will probably be the primary rotation. Maybe Matthew Butler gets some, some snaps. And that'll probably be the primary guys. Maybe Adam Butler can rotate in as well. But Byron Young is expected to play a lot for the Raiders, right? He was a third round pick. Uh, and... It's good that he's getting some pressure in 11 on 11s because his actual tape didn't look all that great. And maybe we'll do a film breakdown on him. Um, you know, and obviously I don't want it to be a negative film breakdown, but I mean, maybe we can just go over every single one of his plays and you guys can kind of judge it for yourself. All right. Um, let's get into this. So, uh, apparently while the Raiders have been in the head of Stetson Bennett, the same can't be said for for uh, Matthew Stafford. He's been picking the Vegas defensive backs apart, all essentially on the outside. So the Raiders' outside corners aren't looking as good right now. And that makes sense. I think Matthew Stafford's a good quarterback. Uh, he's very accurate, and, and he you know he's a good – he stands in the pocket. And another thing to keep in mind is 11-on-11, 7-on-7s. Seven the thing is you're not hitting these quarterbacks. I think for the Raiders, one of our strong suits is the defensive line. And I think when a real life game happens, I think Max Crosby's going to get after it. Tyree Wilson and Chandler Jones and Byron Young. I think these guys are going to get after the quarterback. And when that happens, when they're actually getting after the quarterback, I think quarterbacks like Matthew Stafford are going to panic just a little bit, throw a ball a little bit early. And it'll be up to Nate Hobbs and, and Marcus Peters and Jacorian Bennett and these guys to get after it and intercept those passes. But right now in camp, Matthew... Uh, Stafford, Matt Stafford, is getting after it a little bit, right? He's beating up on the Raiders just a little bit. And we'll see if that continues. Final few updates. Uh, Josh McDaniels did talk about Michael Mayer and Hunter Renfro. Uh, he said the following. He said there was a number of guys that didn't make the trip with us. 
Michael and Hunter are two that are here with us that are actually working back in. I think you'll see them a little bit today working back in and doing some things. Uh, Dylan Parham is one of the guys, and we'll get to the next tweet here. Uh, Dylan Parham is not practicing today, and there's a couple other guys. McClendon Curtis isn't practicing today. Um, there's a couple other guys that aren't practicing today for the Raiders. Obviously, these guys are just kind of rehabbing, and I think that's the way to go about it. You know, some people question the, the Tyree Wilson thing a little bit right they said why the hell is he not out there why the hell is he not practicing are the Raiders waiting too long I think the Raiders handled it perfectly all right with Tyree Wilson you're at the exact point where you want to be um, this is the time where from here forward everything can click for Tyree Wilson he can get better um, I'm fired up man uh, Le Levi Edwards put this last thing out there he said uh, sincerely yours McCormick doing a little bit of damage late in practice. He took a pass from Brian Hoyer to the house and followed up with another solid gain if he plays later. I don't remember if Cecilia McCormick had a touchdown catch. He may have. I know he had one touchdown, at least. So McCormick may be the Raiders' pass catching running back, right? He may do some damage in that area a little bit, right? McCormick may be the long-term replacement for a guy like Amir Abdullah. It's going to be interesting to see how it kind of progresses but I'm very excited for the Raiders. I'm very, very fired up with where this group currently is. The energy's through the roof. I think this team is actually going to be a good team. I think people are kind of sleeping on them a little bit. I know a lot of people were more excited for the team last year because we had just got Devontae Adams. We had extended Waller, extended Renfro. Uh, everything was looking great for where the Raiders were, a whole new scheme and system. And I know this year people aren't, don't have that same energy and expectations, but I think we're a better football team this year. We're deeper. Year two of the same scheme and system. Devontae Adams is back. Yeah, you can say we may have downgraded quarterbacks, although I don't necessarily agree with that. But that's not the end all be all, right? Our defense is going to be better this year. So I think the Raiders will actually have more success, and I'm very, very excited for it. Make sure you guys drop a comment down below. Let me know your guys' thoughts and opinions, and I will see you guys next time with another video.